welcome back everyone uh, in this lecture i will continue to give more examples of uh, groups okay uh, in this lecture we will actually uh, see some groups that are coming from elementary number theory so especially we focus on subgroups of the group of integers okay so let me first uh, recall so what what is the group of integers so this is z plus so that is what we denoted it by the group of integers with respect to addition addition the group of integers with uh, respect to the addition okay so all of you know how to uh, how the addition works in the group of integers okay given any integer n the inverse will be minus n 0 is the identity element okay so now what we are interested in so we are interested in some subgroups of these integers okay let me first define what is a subgroup okay then we will actually uh, look at uh, all possible subgroups of integers so if you have a group let us say g star and then we want to talk about uh, subgroups okay so that means they are first of all subsets of g and that satisfies some specific properties so what is the property so you start with a subset of g again you want it to be non empty subset so now what you actually claim this subset is said to be a subgroup of g so then this binary operation so this can be restricted to h cross h okay so then this becomes uh, a priori map from h cross h to g but what we expect if this uh, h is a subgroup if this is actually a map from h cross h to h and with respect to this map this actually becomes a group okay so a sub a non empty subset h of g is said to be a subgroup of g if the following condition satisfied the first condition you take that star which is the binary operation that is defined on g which is a map from g cross g to g that you do you restrict to h so then you you actually have a map from h cross h to h that means if you take two elements from h call it a b then a star b should be again element of h so that is the first condition the second condition the star restricted to h cross h with respect to this so this tuple okay should be a group on its own okay so what is the meaning of that so that means you have the binary operation defined on h with respect to that you should have associativity uh, existence of identity and the existence of inverse element so if you think about it associativity we already have it for star itself or as a map on g cross g to g so the restriction also will satisfy associativity there won't be any issue okay and since it has to be a group on its own so you need to have identity element so one can easily prove that the identity element of this h will be same as identity element of g okay so that is something you can take it as exercise and then what else is there you have need to actually say only the inverse of given element should be there inside h and inverse of any element of h so as a group there is this element none so with respect to h and with respect to g there are two inverses you can possibly think of but the thing is because the star is restricted map so the inverses actually of h as well as of g coincides okay so that is also something you can actually take it as exercise so what is the exercise okay once you know that h is a subgroup 
let us say so we, we, we use this notation h less than or equal to g to denote h is a subgroup of g. So, then you have this E h which is the identity element of h. So, that should be same as E g. So, that is the first thing. The second thing given A inverse let us say with respect to h that should be same as with respect to g for all A in h. So, these two things are very easy things to check. So, I will leave it to you to check. Okay. So, <coughs> there are some uh, easy way to actually check uh, when something is a subgroup okay we will come to that later but let us first understand what happens in the group of integers okay so now we have defined what is a subgroup so here i makes this proportion if something is a subgroup of this group of integers then we have various equivalence conditions for that being subgroup okay so let us uh, start with some examples of subgroups then i will actually write down uh, various characterization so you can see that uh, if i take just a single ten zero so that is already a subgroup because 0 is actually closed under this uh, addition okay 0 plus 0 is 0 and inverse is there and the restriction if you do the addition to that 0 cross 0 to 0 that is a map so that means this is just a subgroup so you can just verify it and then here is some non trivial subgroups for example you can take all even integers okay which we denoted by 2 z so this is what this is set of all 2 m where m is coming from z so this also can be thought of the set of all even integers so this is also a subgroup so that is i will leave it to check because addition of 2 even will even integers will be even and negative of even integer is even and you can check this star when you restrict to 2z cross to 2z it maps to 2z so then uh, it is also becomes a subgroup so all those things satisfied so now what we are going to do we are going to give various characterization so the first characterization is just to the definition the following are equivalent so start with a so it is a subgroup of g plus so note that uh, a is being subgroup using this exercise you can see that 0 must be in a okay and the second exercise says given any a in capital a minus a also should be there so that means 0 is in a a is equal to minus a so that is called symmetric subset okay so what are all the condition so a satisfies the following properties so 0 is in a and then a is equal to minus a and then if you think about the star being actually just uh, map from a cross a to a simply says that a plus a should be subset of a since a 0 is in a this is equivalent to a plus a being equal to a or otherwise just let me write it this way so a plus a is subset of a okay so a satisfies all these three properties 0 is in a a equal to minus a and a plus a is subset of a and the third thing you can easily see that 0 is in a a equal to minus a and now since a 0 is in a you can say that a plus a is a okay so now so what is the fourth thing so that is more interesting so you can actually say that 0 is in a a equal to minus a 
and a plus 2 a. So, that is also subset of a ok. Since uh, 0 is in a you can say that this is same as capital A ok. So, now the fifth thing which is the most interesting uh, part of uh, uh, the equivalence condition. So, given this capital A if it is a subgroup then there exist n in G plus such that A will be exactly given by n h z. So, it is not hard to check that this n h z they are all subgroups ok and we are saying that the fifth one says that these are all the only subgroups ok of of integers. So, what is g plus? So, g plus in our notation these are all non negative integers. So, that means 0, 1, 2, 3 etcetera. For us n means they are all positive integers 1, 2, 3 etcetera and z means just uh, all integers 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etcetera. So, this is our notation ok. So, let us prove this ok. The proof uses what is called division algorithm. So, let us first see the division algorithm proof and then later we will actually come to the proof of this uh, proportion. So, this proportion let us call it 1 ok. So, to prove this proportion we need this following uh, division algorithm. So, let me just uh, state and prove ok. So, here is the division algorithm. So, let me state the division algorithm for first to natural numbers, then later uh, we can state it for integers or otherwise one can state it for integers straight away not a problem. So, what we do we start with some natural number let us say n ok and some integer a. So, then what we prove there exist unique q. So, coming from e z and r ok. So, again it is also coming from e z, but that satisfies the following properties ok such that this a can be written as some n q plus r with the condition that this r is strictly less than n and it is non negative integer. So, this is the condition ok. So, this a can be written as n q plus r and uh, where this r is the remainder ok modulo n. So, that can be at most n, it is non negative and at most n and this q is called quotient ok. So, this q is called quotient and this r is called remainder. So, this is something you must have seen in school ok, maybe without proof. So, maybe I will I will prove it for you ok. So, now uh, there are various cases that one supposed to consider. So, most uh, non trivial cases when a is being non negative integer ok. So, maybe we can actually start with that and then I will explain what really happens. So, here is the proof. So, the very first case what we do we assume that a is non negative integer ok. So, in that case, so there are following possibilities. For example, if a is 0, then you can take q and r to be 0. So, there is no issue ok. So, this is the sub case. So, if a is 0, so then you can take q 0 and r 0. So, that works. So, we first prove the existence. So, this symbol I believe you must have seen. So, there exist it means so this is the symbol for there exists and this uh, ex exclamation mark. So, this is for the unique 
uniqueness. So, this uh, there exists with this symbol means there exists unique q and r inside each other satisfying this. Okay, so, when a equal to 0 it is clear that we can take q 0 r 0. So, then the equation that uh, that we are interested in this r is satisfied. So, so for that purpose we can assume that actually a is non 0. So, that means a is just a positive natural number. Now, know that again there are two cases you can you can consider 1.1.1. So, I am writing it in very detail I also want to teach you how to write mathematics. Okay. So, there are so many possible cases that appear. So, it is important to actually spell it out everything and then consider all possible cases. So, it is important to learn how to write mathematics. So, that is why I am just giving very detailed uh, explanation here Maybe that is something you should also learn over the time. Okay. Later once the course progresses I will not give you this much details, but anyway. So, let us uh, see the sub case 1.1.1 where you can assume that a is already smaller than n. So, this is positive, but smaller than n. So, then what you can do in that case? So, in that case, okay, maybe this is this case can be combined with a greater than or equal to 0 as well. So, maybe the first case you do not need to consider, this case you do not need to consider. For example, if this is greater than or equal to 0 and less than n, still you can take q to be 0. So, then take q to be 0 and r to be a. So, then you have a equal to q n plus r where r is strictly less than because r is a. So, this is satisfied. Okay. So, when whenever a is strictly less than n, we cannot really subtract multiple of n. Okay. So, there is nothing to subtract. So, we just subtract 0 multiple of n and then we just get the remainder. So, that remainder will be strictly less than n that is what uh, we are saying in this. Okay. So, now what will be the case 1.2.2 you can assume a is greater than n. So, this is the most interesting case. Okay. So, let us try to do uh, this case and then we will understand what we really do. Okay, what is division algorithm is all about? So, basically you want to subtract multiple of n from a and then you reduce the size and then you reduce the size successfully. So, that you come down to something that is actually smaller than n. So, that is what remains. Okay. For example, so, let us pictorially understand. So, let us say you have a scale. So, let us say you are in this real line okay, and then you have 0 here and then you have a here and then you have n here. Okay. So, this is the scale which is which you are using this is the n, n scale okay. and this is this a scale. So, you can see that so, if you are trying to measure this scale of size a with uh, scale of size n, then you can keep repeating that. Na, okay. You can just put this scale inside this and then you just start measuring. Okay. This is again another n scale, this is another n scale like that you just put them here. So, then something will be remaining. Okay. So, it is a very badly drawn. Let us take a here and this is your n and then at some point you have another n and something remains here. So, that remaining thing cannot exceed n because if it exceed n then you can put one more scale of size n there and then cover it. Okay. So, that is why this remainder whatever that comes that is actually should be smaller than n. 
So, this is the pictorial explanation. So, let us try to do algorithmically what, what we are doing and then later I will tell you how to write down the clean proof. So, you start with A. <coughs> what do you do first? You subtract N and then see whether it is less than N or greater than or equal to N. Okay, only those two are the possibilities. Na? So, for example, if it is less than n, so then what will happen? A will become equal to A minus n plus n. Okay, then this becomes the remainder R and quotient becomes 1 and this is your uh, star, whatever we have written, this star. Okay, the Q is 1. But what can happen? A minus n could be bigger than n. In that case, what you can do? You can subtract one more times and then see what happens. So, A minus 2n will be greater or equal to 0 and then A minus 2n you see whether it is less than n or greater or equal to n. If it is less than n, then you write A equal to A minus 2n plus 2n, then quotient becomes 2 and remainder becomes A minus 2n. Okay. So, this is what you are going to continuously do. You keep subtracting n from A that means you keep subtracting multiple of n from A and then you see when you reach some number that is smaller than n. Okay. And division algorithm guarantees that that is always possible. <coughs> okay. So, that way you will be actually guaranteed that there is a quotient as well as remainder. Okay. So, algorithmically it is very clear this is what we are doing, but how one writes down the proof. Okay. So, this is something you have to put it mathematically. So, whenever you want to write every, anything in mathematically, so try to construct so sets that satisfy some property and then look for something and then that whatever you are looking for will actually give you the result. Okay. So, here for example, we are looking for remainder and quotient. So, the best thing to do is what we can do, we can keep subtracting from A. Na? So, I can look at all possible subtraction. For example, I can take A minus some Q dash N. So, I can actually collect all Q dash from natural numbers such that A minus Q dash N is greater than or equal to 0. So, this set is well defined. Okay. So, because we assume that A is greater than or equal to N, so A minus N is all at least greater than or equal to 0. So, 1 is there. Okay. So, note that 1 is in this set and this set I am calling, I am going to call it as capital Q. Okay. So, now note that this capital Q, okay, so this has to be finite. So, that is the most important thing. So, why it is finite? So, because this A is finite, N is finite. So, how many things you can subtract? How many multiples of N you can subtract from A? So, that it remains actually non-negative. Okay. So, at least you can see that A minus Q dash N is greater than or equal to 0 implies that A by N is greater than or equal to Q dash and this is a fixed rational number. So, that implies that this is actually finite. Okay. But I would actually recommend you to actually use only the properties of natural numbers to prove the same thing. I will leave it to you to think about it, but it is easy to prove that this Q is finite. Okay. But I already gave you one proof. So, let me leave it as exercise, prove that Q is finite. That means it cannot have too many, infinitely many elements. So, now once it is finite, you can see that I can talk about max. So, the max Q, I can call it Q. So, what is the property of Q? Q is in capital Q. So, that implies A minus Q n is greater than or equal to 0 and Q plus 1 is not in Q because q is the max. So, that implies a minus q plus n, n is strictly less than 0. So, that implies a minus q n 
is less than n. So, I can take r to be just this a minus q n. So, this is the remainder. Okay. So, r is a minus q n. So, then a equal to q n plus r and then this r satisfies greater than or equal to 0 less than n because of this. Okay. So, if you think about it indeed you can prove that q is exactly equal to 1, 2 etcetera q. Okay. So, this is also something you can verify. So, but anyway this actually proves the existence of q and existence of r for this particular case. So, that is uh, when a greater than or equal to n. So, if you go back we have considered all cases when a is non-negative. So, only the case that remains is a is actually negative. Okay. When a is negative what we can do we can simply take minus a and then apply the division algorithm. Okay. In case a is actually inside minus g plus. So, then what we can do we can just take minus a. So, which is in g plus. So, then I can apply the division algorithm then I get n q plus r from the earlier argument. So, then you can see that then a will become n times minus q minus r. But the thing is this r is less than or equal to sorry greater than or equal to 0 and less than n. So, then what will happen to minus r? Minus r will be minus n minus r less than or equal to 0. But what we want? We want something that is actually less than. Eh? So, you can modify so that this r remainder is always between 0 and n, n minus 1. Okay. So, for that what we can do? We can simply just add and subtract 1 n and then see what happens. So, basically that is what we, we are allowed to add and multiply. So, add and multiply sorry add and subtract the multiple of n. Eh? So, that is not a problem. So, you keep a as it is n minus q you just add n and then subtract n and then see what happens. Okay. So, look at n minus r. So, and then see what, what really happens. So, <coughs> what you can do? You can just take a to b n minus q minus 1 plus n minus r. So, this I want to take it as remainder. So, what happens to n minus r? So, n minus r is actually positive. So, that is fine and then y it is uh, less than or equal to n. So, we want uh, it to be less than n. So, yeah this is less than or equal to n that is because yeah r is greater than or equal to 0. So, this is something we are getting for free. Okay. So, this is immediate 0 less strictly greater than n minus r less than or equal to n. So, now, suppose this n minus r is equal to n then again you can subtract one more n. Okay. So, again there are two cases. So, case 1 will be if n minus r is strictly less than then we are done there is no issue and then case 2 will be what if n minus r is equal to n then you write a equal to n minus q minus 1 and then minus 1 you subtract and add. So, then this will become actually plus n minus r minus n that is what you want to take and then you add it. So, this will become 1. So, this will get cancelled. So, again you get minus q plus minus r. Uh, yeah, this becomes 0 actually because this is. Okay. In all these cases you are able to actually produce q and r such that the equation star holds. So, there is no issue. Okay. So, this is actually happens. So, now in this case we need to prove the uniqueness. Okay. 
So, let us see how one can prove the uniqueness and then I uh, will stop. Okay. So, let us say you have two tuples q and r, q dash r dash such that the same equation holds n q plus r similarly n q dash plus r dash. Now, note that 0 will be less than or equal to r and then r dash strictly less than n. So, these are all the conditions that you have. Okay. So, now what you can do you can just uh, assume q is greater than or equal to q dash because you have the order property. So, this is without loss of generality one can assume this. So, then in particularly n into q minus q dash will be same as r dash minus r and this thing is multiple of n and this is non-negative. In case this q is not equal to q dash then this will be positive multiple of n okay it is like 2 n 3 n and so on. But on the other side you have r dash minus r both of them are strictly less than n. So, the difference will be definitely strictly less than n. So, that cannot be just multiple of n that forces that q equal to q dash and now q equal to q dash will force that r dash equal to r. So, this proves the uniqueness of the quotient and remainder. Okay. So, maybe I will take another uh, 2 3 minutes and then complete the proof that I have actually guaranteed. So, if you go back uh, to the proportion that I stated and from the definition it is clear that A is being subgroup will immediately imply 0 is in A and A equal to minus A and then A plus A is subset of A. Since 0 is in A is assumed then this A plus A subset of A will imply that A plus A equal to A. So, so 1 implies 2 and 2 implies 3 they are obvious. Now, 3 implies 4 is also obvious because if 0 is in A is there and A equal to minus A is already there and A plus A is equal to A then obviously A plus 2A <coughs> maybe you write it as a plus 2a is subset of a. So, that is obviously subset of a and now 0 is there. So, a plus 2a is also equal to a. Okay. So, maybe you write it as 4 dash. So, that is 0 is in a, a equal to minus a and then a plus 2a is equal to a. So, now 0 being in a that is what implies a plus 2a subset of a immediately implies a plus 2a equal to a. Okay. So, 4 implies 4 dash is also obvious. So, what is non-trivial? The non-trivial thing is 4 dash implies 5 that, that means you assume that 0 is in A, you assume that 0 is in A, A equal to minus A and then A plus 2A is equal to A or subset of A does not matter. Okay. So, then we want to prove that there exist we want to prove that there exist n in Ej plus such that A equal to n h. Okay, let us see how to prove this. So, what we do first if A is 0 then there is nothing to prove then there is nothing to prove. So, that is why we assume we assume A is non-zero. So, if A is non-zero, so then that means there is something A in capital A. So, without loss of generality I can assume A is positive because A is equal to minus A. You take either A or minus A one of them will be positive. So, I can assume that A is positive. So, now look at A intersection N and this is non-empty. So, now what is Wellerding principle says? So, it contains least element. So, I can talk about minimum of A intersection N that you call it N. Okay. So, the minimum of this you call it N. Now, note that A plus 2A is equal to A and a equal to minus a. So, what it says? It says 
minus n is in A okay? and then n plus 2 minus n. So, sorry that is uh, yeah, 2 plus n you take. So, that means 3 n. So, 3 s 3 n is in A. So, now you take n plus okay, uh, 2 times 3 n. So, that will be 6 7 n in A and similarly you can also take 2 plus 2 7 n that will be like 14 n and so on. So, now what we climb? So, we climb that okay, first of all n is at is a subset of A. So, this is our first climb. Okay. So, this we want to prove that uh, for using these things. Okay. So, since A is equal to minus A, it is enough to prove only the positive multiples are there. So, that is what we are trying to prove. But A plus 2A is equal to A already implies that 3N is there, 7N is there and so on. Okay. So, we want to get uh, twice N and so on. So, and then we see how it, how it can be done. Okay. So, let us uh, uh, start with Yeah. So, let us start with some element A. Okay. So, this is one thing that we need to climb. The another thing that we need to climb is A is also subset of N H at. Okay. So, you start with A in capital A and then see what happens. So, now since A is in uh, capital A. So, you can actually write it uh, this A as some Q Q n plus r with the r is being less than n. Okay? Sorry, less than 2 n. So, now what we know? We know that A minus 2 Q n which is r. So, this should be in capital A because a plus 2a is a. So, a plus 2a is a. So, that implies if I take any multiple of okay, even multiple of n, okay, if I add it with this a, so that a minus 2b n should be in a for all a b in a. So, that is easy to say. Okay, any even multiple if I add or subtract, so that has to be inside capital A. So, that means this R should be in capital A. But note that this R cannot be strictly less than N. Why? N is the minimum that we have al already chosen. Na? So, N is the minimum among all A intersection N. So, that means this, this cannot happen. So, that forces that N should be at least r okay, and then r is less than 2 n. So, this is what you have. So, n greater than or equal to sorry less than or equal to r less than 2 n. So, that you have. So, now if n is equal to r then what happens a will become multiple of n. Okay. So, if n equal to r so, then A will be inside N is shut. So, that is that is the case that we want to climb. So, that will be done. But uh, N may not be equal to R. Then let us see what happens in that case. Then N becomes greater than R and less than 2 N. Okay. So, then if you just subtract by minus N, then what do you get? So, let us subtract by minus 2 N you get minus n less than r minus 2 n less than 0. But note that r is in capital A. So, that means r minus 2 n is also in capital A. Okay? 
but since this is less than 0 2 n minus r which is greater than 0 this 2 n minus r is also in capital A, but what will be 2 n minus r? So, 2 n minus r is positive okay, and strictly smaller than n. So, 2 n minus r is positive and strictly smaller than n. So, that forces that we get a contradiction we get a contradiction. Why we got contradiction? We assume that n is not equal to r. Okay. So, because n is the smallest element that is inside A intersection n. So, we have produced something smaller than that that is in capital A and it is positive. So, that we got because we assume that n equal to r. That means, this A that we have taken that has to be always inside a nature. And now, A is actually contained in a jet and uh, N is inside A and A plus 2 A equal to A. Now, using this we want to prove that n is equal to a equal to n is okay so let us uh, do step by step and then uh, we can actually reach so you have uh, n is in a and then a plus 2a is a and a is also equal to minus a okay so that means minus n is already in capital a so that is fine so, now you take uh, uh, 0 here in A. So, then 0 plus 2n. So, that is in A plus 2a. So, which is A. So, that means implies 2n is in capital A. So, now if you take n plus 2n, okay, so that is inside A plus 2a. So, which is A. So, that implies 3n is in capital A. So, like this, so I will leave it to you to complete the proof. You can prove that, prove that any positive multiple of n is in capital A. Since A equal to minus A, that would imply that n is at is subset of A and that would imply that A equal to n is at. Okay. So, indeed what we have proved, we have proved that any subgroup of integer must be of the form n is at. So, along the on the way we actually gave various characterization of these subgroups. One important particular characterization is that it is enough to have just 0 is in A and A is symmetric and A plus 2A is equal to A. So, now I will leave it as exercise to think about. So, you take some subset of integers again and then satisfying the following conditions 0 is in A and it is symmetric. So, now you assume that A plus 3A is equal to A. Okay. So, now this is the condition is given. So, my question is what can you say about capital A. Okay. And similarly, the same question you can ask for other types of uh, relations. Okay. So, note that if A is subgroup, okay. if A is subgroup, so, then you know that any m a plus n a. So, this will be subset of a for all m and n from each other. Okay. So, this is very very strong condition. So, this may be you can take it as exercise and then you can prove this. So, then we have any multiple of that means any m a plus n b should be in a for all m and sorry 
So, let us fix that m n. So, then for all yeah if even if you vary it is ok for all m n in EJ and a b in capital. So, this is what we want to ok. So, this gives some information about subgroup of integers ok. So, with this I will stop here we are running out of time and then I will continue with uh, some more uh, groups that actually comes from this uh, elementary number theory called arithmetic groups ok modulo n. So, with respect to addition modulo n as well as with respect to multiplication modulo n we can talk about uh, some groups. So, we will see that in our next lecture. I will stop here. Thanks.